Hello there, welcome back. In this video I'm about a mile or so, maybe it's a mile and a half away from my house and I've come out here to see what it's like for fungus. I'm here by myself so if I do find any I'm not sure whether I'm going to be able to identify them but I'll have a go. About half a mile away from where I am now there's a really really dark damp piece of the wood. That's really the place that I'm aiming for but here there's a hell of a lot of big hardwoods, mostly beech. Big problem, look at the floor. Uh, spotting fungi in amongst that is going to be very, very hard. So the fungi is my primary reason for coming into these woods. It's really just to save Colin and myself a wasted trip if there isn't any. Um, because we were intending to come over here in the next few weeks to check. Now the secondary reason that I'm here is to take a good look around, identify any animal tracks and signs um, with a view to identifying places where I can put game cameras. I've got three different game cameras and I'm going to be using those very very soon in a series called Pond Guru vs Nature. Now I'm not going to set these game cams in obvious places like feeding stations um, or near fox sets or badger sets or anything like that because that is just too easy. I want it to be a little bit of a test. So by using powers of observation I'm going to identify places and also identify the animals that I think I'm going to capture on the camera. Whether that works or not I don't really know. It's got two chances and if I don't get the intended animal or bird on the particular game camera that I set nature will win. If I do get the one that I identified then I win and I'm going to keep a running score. So look out for those videos. I'm really looking forward to, to filming them because it's just right up my street and hopefully as the weather gets worse and colder we might even get some snow. We'll be able to identify some beautiful tracks then and I can just imagine game cam footage against snow will be absolutely excellent. Oh, hi up. <laughs> Do you know, I've just been charging through this wood and where I was just filming that last bit are some amethyst deceiver. They're an edible. I recognise that one. Particularly grows under beach. So that's the first one, straight away. Very good. Let's see if we can find any more. Here we've got some wood sorrel. Looks very much like clover and you can eat that all year, but it's best early season. It's now late season, so it might taste a bit bitter. It's alright actually, yeah, it's okay. Now we've got a lot of black bits of fungus that are really knackered. And I'm just wondering if that's horn of plenty. So I know on our last trip, the bits that we found were really near the end of the season. That's probably what that is. In which case it'd be worth checking out here next year. Now there's a lot of these mushrooms about and I don't actually know what they are. They're not a funnel cap, I know that much. Possibly a wood bluet? I don't know. I'll put what they actually are in the video description because I'll get Colin to take a look at this footage. That's what we're looking at. They smell exactly like field mushrooms. Most of them have quite a delicate smell. But these ones definitely mushroomy. I'd like to think they were edible because there's loads of them down here. Just next to the stream here we've got a place where either a sparrowhawk or possibly even a goshawk has torn something to bits on top of here and by the looks of this it's spent a long time here. All of the moss has been worn off there. How fresh is that? The meat's still red on that, that's off a pigeon. Something has landed here and absolutely devoured that. Now I know there is goshawks in this wood because I've seen them on very very rare occasions. 
So you're probably thinking, put a camera there, put a camera there. Well, that beech tree behind me is bang on the path. It's much too close to the path. I just can't take the risk. And it's very open here with it being deciduous woodland. If I can find a similar site that's more out of the way, then certainly I will put a camera on it. But not here, because people do walk through here daily. If they see the camera, it's going to go missing. These things are expensive. Okay, what we've got here is a parish boundary stone. And way back in the day, these stones would be put every so often, maybe every half a mile, often following a stream. This side would be one person's land. This side would be the other person's land. And as you can see, there's a W on this side and there's an H on that other side. Now these stones are hundreds of years old. How many hundred? I don't know. Could be 200, could be 400, could be 600, could be a thousand. And back in the day, people of a priestly sort of persuasion would walk along the parish boundaries and often leave silver as a, like a good luck token next to these or somewhere around where the parish boundary was, apparently. I've never detected around here, but finding this stone makes me really keen to get back here with a metal detector and give it a go just in case somebody's left some silver hundreds of years ago. This area behind me here, and in fact all the way along this bank side, is so similar to that last site that me and Colin were at, his secret site where we've got all those chanterelles. I can only imagine that there will be here, but I can't see any yet. This looks absolutely perfect. It's dark, it's damp, it's mossy. There's a good leaf layer on the ground. Got to be some here somewhere. I love this. Two great big old gate posts in the middle of nowhere in this wood. Proper stone gate posts. And they could be hundreds and hundreds of years old. We've got a wall going up there. We've got a wall heading off behind the camera. There's a crossing point on the stream. Ah oh man, this has got to be detected. It has to be. Anybody could have been sitting up on that bank side way back in the day, before all this was trees. You know, maybe this was a nice open field. Maybe people used to picnic here hundreds of years ago. Who knows? Hopefully, if I get back with a metal detector, the finds will tell me what people have been doing here. And here we've got a puffball of some sort. Recognize the little spikes on the top. Not sure whether that's a common one or a pedestal one. We did find one similar to that in the last video, but that'll be inedible. Now we've got the main footpath just up on the ridge here, but I'm following this deer track. And how do we know it's a deer track? Well, because they've rubbed all the bark off with their antlers. These little skinny trees up in front are thrashed to bits as well. Look at that. No bark at all left on the side of that. That one's all scarred up as well. And this is a beautiful trail. This is a possible place for a game cam because it's well off the path. Now I know from what Collins told me this should be a good spot. There's bilberries, there's wood rush, there's a good covering of leaves, there's moss on the ground, there's old tree stumps, there's fallen trees. But I just can't find anything. It's dark, it's damp, it's got everything going for it. Maybe I'm just a little bit too late. When we get down to the pine forest, which is probably only another three or four hundred meters, um, there'll be a lot less fallen leaves on the ground and we'll get a true impression of what's about in that place. Now I was intending to come up the same way as I went down, just a slightly higher elevation, but I'm actually going to come back up the river later on, on the other side. That's been thinned out, maybe it's a year to 18 months ago, there'll have been a lot of disturbance there. Hopefully that'll have spurred on fungus to really fruit. Now these sad excuses for fungi here, or birch polypore, also known as razor strop fungus. 
I remember that one from one of our previous videos. Now places like this would be an absolutely cracking place for a game cam. We've got a standing tree here, we've got a fallen one here, and this fallen one is a perfect transition from ground to trees for squirrels. It's a lot easier for squirrels to run up a shallow slope than it is to go up a 90 degree straight up and down tree. Plus, when they're going up and down here, they get a good chance to look around. They're going up a tree, the tree is actually obscuring a lot of their view. They're kind of only looking up unless they turn around. Up here, it's just a much safer way to get up into the trees. Unfortunately, this is a path that's used on shooting days. I would love to stick a game cam on there and you'd get squirrels running up and down here all day. But I just can't because I know the camera will get seen and it'll get stolen. Here's a couple of awesome transitions. There's one there. Up into a hazel tree. And then we've got this one going up there. What a beautiful run that is. Straight up into the branches. Well, we've got the path just here. Stream. Bridge here. If that thing there is a geocache. It's the worst hidden one ever. <laughs> They're not even trying. You could see that from the path. That's surely an entry level geocache. I think the least I could do is cover it up a little bit. Yeah, that's better. We've got a really beautiful waterfall behind me there. And if there was a lot of migratory fish coming up the river, they would surely head up this stream and they would get stuck in that pool down there. That would be a total murder hole for otters. They'd be pounding that, but we don't have many migratory fish come up the Derwent yet. There is fish passes going in. So in a few years, there will be fish trying to get up this waterfall and failing badly. That down there will be an awesome otter feeding point. The last time I came into these woods was late spring, early summer, when I was testing out the Harkala Pro Hunter gear. It's even darker now, believe it or not. It looks properly evil in there. But I've seen some fungus, so we're off to a good start. I'm no expert, but I would say that was a funnel cap of some sort. Very big as well. That one's actually full of water. There's quite a few of these in here, so hopefully we'll find some different types in this extremely dark wood. Now the thing that I absolutely love about going for a walk when it's damp, after a lot of rain, everything is quiet. You can still hear the animals, you can still hear squirrels going up the trees, you can still hear the birds singing. But you can walk really, really quietly because all those little twigs that would ordinarily be going when you're walking along off the paths, they're pretty much silent. Even if you do snap a twig, it tends to bend before it snaps and it's a hell of a lot quieter. Just check this out. Now if you're into shooting, or if you're just into photography of animals, after a prolonged period of rain is an excellent time to go out. Animals tend to take shelter in the trees, and you can get fairly close to them very, very quietly when everything's damp. This is a coniferous woodland. 
mostly, what are they, Douglas pine, a few larch, a few scotch trees mixed in with really pasty looking silver birch and so on. But there's quite a few fungi in here. Here we've got a very interesting tree that's dropped down. It looks like a larch tree. Something has absolutely gone to town on there. And it's not on a, a footpath or anything, so it's, it's not as if it's been, you know, broken off by people walking over it. Because we've got another piece here, which has all its bark on. My guess would be that something's been ripping into this, possibly a badger, to try and get grubs out of here, grubs and larvae and so on. That would be my guess. This is how big they are compared to my hand. Look at that. I'm sure that's the same type as what we've just seen. So check the video description. I'll get Colin to put an ID on those. Here we've got a really, really big badger set. They've chucked some earth out of here over the years. Just next to it we've got the most beautiful piece of wood, which is way too big and heavy, unfortunately, to carry home. That would be absolutely awesome in a garden with ferns growing out of it. Just check this out. There's the badger holes. You can see how much muck they've excavated. Look <laughs> at that. All the way down the bank side there. I'm sure they'll be killing those trees off by covering the trunks up in muck. God. Cast your eyes on that. That is just, to me, that's a vision of beauty. Absolutely awesome. It's, it's almost petrified. Well, I'm going to head up on the other side of the stream now. Um, hopefully there'll be some more different types of fungi and some more animal tracks and signs. Let's see. I found absolutely nout. I'm almost back to the car and I haven't found anything of interest to show you. However, see down behind me there, some lovely straight poles if you want to make a shelter. Look at that. We've got the path just there. And here we've got another place where a sparrowhawk or a goshawk has obviously had a meal, plucked the pigeon. It's just too dangerous to put a game cam here because it will get seen. This place is absolutely heaving with squirrels. I must have seen about 10, but they move so fast you can't get them on film very well. That one is approximately 20 yards away. And this camera doesn't have any anti-shake facility, so I do apologise for the quality of the footage. Now this tree is a long way away from any sort of civilization. But you can see behind me there, it's got all sorts of carvings in. And up there somewhere are my initials from 30 years ago. It's all grown out. And you you can't even read RT now. But um, there's ones here from people who I went to school with and who I remember from my local village. There's also one very special one. And um, I made a, a bit of a trip just to see this tree because when I was at my brother's house, one of his friends was explaining that he came for a walk here with his girlfriend and he carved something into the tree and told her that he thought he saw something around the back of the tree. so. He was kind of encouraging her to go around and take a look. And this is what's written. And I think on that note, we'll end the video. I'm almost back to the car now. Unfortunately, the walk up that other side of the stream it didn't yield much in the way of interesting tracks and signs. Certainly nothing that we hadn't seen before along the other side. Um, and there was no different fungus either, so it wasn't worth doubling up on the filming of that. Thanks very much for watching. I shall see you in the next video. And, oh, look out for those Pond Guru versus Nature videos. They're just something a little bit different. And I'm sure if you've enjoyed this video, you will definitely enjoy those ones.
Now there is a secondary reason why I'm here and that is to have a look around 